Hello, my name is Caitlin Steber, and I'm a graduate student in the laboratory of Dr. Lucy Liao at Maine Medical Center Research Institute through the Graduate School of Biomedical Science and Engineering at the University of Maine. And my project is focused on understanding how perivascular adipose tissue, or PVAT, changes during cardiovascular disease. So PVAT sits on the vessel wall and secretes factors that affect the underlying smooth muscle cells. And my goal is to understand how what is secreted changes during disease states and specifically how the trafficking molecule RAB27A controls adipogenesis of PVAT that then goes on to affect this paracrine secretion. PVAT sits on the vessel wall and in metabolically healthy individuals secretes factors to decrease vasoconstriction and proliferation of the underlying smooth muscle. However, in cases of obesity, what is secreted by PVAC changes, increasing vasoconstriction and proliferation of the underlying smooth muscle cells, leading to the closing of the diameter of the lumen, which restricts blood flow and contributes to disease pathogenesis. To understand this in the case of cardiovascular disease, I'm using two donor populations those undergoing mitral valve repair or VR patients, and those undergoing coronary artery bypass graft or cabbage surgeries. For the VR patients, we expect there to be limited arterial disease as these are usually congenital conditions that are being corrected, and thus we expect PVAT to have this healthy phenotype. However, in the cabbage patients, we generally see more extensive arterial disease, as you can see here, and expect this unhealthy PVAT phenotype. In addition, you can see that the average BMI for cabbage donors is higher than those for VR donors. Additionally, when we look at the occurrence of diabetes through using the HbA1c levels, while there is no significant difference between the two groups, you can see that the spread in the cabbage group is larger, and that is because these patients right here represent those with diabetes. So there's a higher prevalence of diabetes in the cabbage group where there is no diabetes in the VR group, and this will affect the metabolic profile of PVAT as well. To study this, we take excised adipose tissue from the two donor populations that during their surgeries would otherwise be discarded, and we divide these samples into three parts, a piece for histology, a piece for western blots, and a piece that we use in cell culture to be able to grow up the adipose tissue and look at what's happening on a molecular level. And then once we have this, we have these downstream detection methods, such as oil red O staining for lipids, immunofluorescence for lipid and RAB27A markers, and immunoblot for lipid and RAB27A markers. What we have found so far is that RAB27A is expressed in human PVAT, and you can see that here in this human PVAT sample from a cabbage donor. You can see in green you have perilipin, which is a lipid coat marker surrounding the lipid droplets, and then also in red you have RAB27A. So this is important because our target protein is expressed in our target tissue. Additionally, we are able to demonstrate some of the role of RAB27A in adipogenesis. And the way that we do this is we look at adipose progenitors before they are adipocytes and then after they're differentiated into mature adipocytes. And we found that when you decrease RAB27A expression in adipose progenitors or preadipocytes, once you differentiate them into mature adipocytes, there is less lipid as indicated by oil red O staining. And this means that RAB27A is controlling adipogenesis. So the future of my project is to understand exactly the mechanism of how RAB27A is controlling adipogenesis and how this changes in different cardiovascular diseases. Thank you for coming to my poster and please let me know if you have any questions.